Well, my name is Jonathan Shaffey. I'm a member of the Radical Independence Campaign. And I suppose there's a whole range of reasons why you might vote yes, but I want to outline what I think are some of the key reasons. Um, to start with the economic argument, over the last three decades, we've underwent a process of increased privatisation, of cuts to our services, and a rising rate of inequality. The inequality isn't just a case of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. In fact, the rich are now mega rich. The thousand richest people in Britain now have a combined wealth of over 500 billion pounds. But that wealth has shot up by 15% in the last year. And if you look at what's happening at the under, other end of the spectrum, we have hundreds of thousands of people right across the UK who are reliant on food banks. In fact, in the last year, over 900,000 people had to apply for emergency food aid. Now think about this, it's 2014. Why do we have a situation of such gross inequality? Why do we have a situation where people can't even get the basics of what's necessary to live? Something else is going on while all this is happening. The services which people rely on are being cut and being privatised. David Cameron said that he wouldn't privatise and that he wouldn't cut frontline services. But the NHS is being privatised and being cut. The Royal Mail is being taken into private hands as well. What this represents is a massive transfer of wealth from the public pus to the private sector, from the mass of the people to a tiny number of people at the top of society. And at the same time as the economic crisis has been going on, we also face in this country a political crisis because Westminster does not represent the views of ordinary people and it's not a government that we voted for. In fact, we only elected one Tory MP and yet we are having to put up with a government whose agenda doesn't just last one term, but is meant to last for decades to come. They are reshaping the society around them in the image of the rich and in the image of the powerful. This independence referendum gives us the opportunity to take the power back. It gives us a platform through which we can start to unravel a serious plan of investment into renewable energy, into education, into defending our public services. It says that not only are we in favour of these things, but that we reject what's happened over the last three decades as a result of the British establishment. These are the political and the economic tasks that face us. But also Britain's role internationally has to be called into question. Why do we have the scrap metal that is Trident sitting in Faz Lane? Let's scrap Trident and spend the money on the services. Let's scrap Trident and spend the money on funding a future for our young people. And also let's look at the past 10 years which has brought us into illegal wars. For example, in Iraq, where over a million people have died as a result of that war. Actually, there are four million people in Iraq who have been made refugees. Britain's legacy in the world isn't based on cooperation. Britain's legacy in the world is not based on international solidarity. It's based on exploitation. It's based on imperialism. And we have an opportunity to build a country that instead of seeking to have peace through superior firepower, seeks to work with its neighbours in a fashion which means that both benefit from a mutually reinforcing relationship of solidarity. That's the sort of Scotland that we can build. And it's the Scotland which I think we can only achieve if we break free from the shackles that we've been trapped in under the, Westminster, um, uh, under the Westminster government. The last point that I would make that brings all this together is something about the referendum process itself. The referendum process has brought together a diverse range of views, a diverse range of organisations and campaigns and individuals. But what we've seen already come to life is a democratic revival. For the first time in a long time, communities who have been disengaged, deliberately disengaged from the political process, are beginning not only to engage themselves in a political discussion about how we might change society, but are actually for the first time realising that this time your vote counts, that this time you are not voting for any one particular political party, but you're voting for an idea. You're voting for the potential that is an independent Scotland that says no to Trident, no to inequality, that says yes to building a fairer society in which we can live dignified lives together. And that, I think, is something not just voting yes for, but voting yes and then making sure that we all shape together the sort of society that we want to see after.